Hello again from New York. This is Cycle Chic with a third tutorial video on color tweaking. That's what I call it. Okay, I'm going to jump right in with a screen recording that I took from my MacBook going through all of the color adjustments, what I call, like I said, color tweaking. Here we go. So here, I'm going to take this video and the, my, the first thing I go to here is this color curves. So you have RGB, which is red, green, blue, red, green, or blue. And these three alone have some pretty dramatic effects. Maybe I should show you those first. So scrub through the video here, you see it's all subway kind of blah. A few moves of few few clicks on the mouse here and let me show you red I'm gonna take it up a little down a little here big change pretty crazy dramatic right you can like really make it pop out all the reds so that's something in and of itself but I usually leave it at that So now, let's go to blue, pop that up on the front end and down on the back end, and you get a cool like green purple effect. Fine. Now, you go up to exposure and play with these. Exposure is your heavy hitter of these six controls, exposure, highlight, shadow, brightness, contrast, and black point. Highlights doesn't usually do a whole lot. It's more like fine tuning. Shadow and brightness, you can think of kind of as pairs or partners. So, so taking the, not always, but sometimes, but as kind of a rule, taking the brightness up or the shadows down has a similar effect in shadows up and brightness down. And both up, both down, they kind of cancel each other out. If that makes sense. Likewise with contrast and black point, when you have adjusted the colors at the outset um, on your color curves, like I did with the red and blue, and then go moving the black point, you get different effects than if you have a natural uh, photograph or video or one that you have just adjusted RGB color curves. And you'll see, I can show you examples of that more easily than I can explain. So I, I kind of like the look at this, maybe. It's, it's different, I can work with it. I will get to why um, in the specifics uh, in a much later video when I start talking about overlays. But when you can create a lot of kind of pure green in a video then that facilitates your ability to neatly overlay another video or picture or if you've watched my music videos and you've seen multiple examples of these where there's like um, a video on top of or underneath another and it's essentially using uh, a green screen kind of blue screen slash blue screen effect where you're making the green the blue transparent let's see where was i saturation so a lot of these i just do as a matter of habit and routine don't always like for example here i'm not going to change the saturation but just you know for funsies i take it up and take it down and see if that like makes something cool or different or unique and then like this particular video where it's all in the subway so the colors are kind of the same but if it were one where I'm riding all different parts of the city and I'm in the river and in tall buildings and in shadows and in sunlight then I would make a point to um, go all along the timeline of the video uh, to make sure the adjustments that I made which here on this MacBook are going to apply to the entire video, uh, look good in all places. The, the one area is not just like completely dark or gray or weird. 
So what I didn't um, adjust here was the green. It starts getting a little messy, maybe, when you do too many adjustments. Like I, with these kind of heavy hitter color curves on the red, green, and blue. Sometimes it's a cool effect, but I've already adjusted my settings and I kind of like them. Although this, this looks okay. Different, something I could have fun with. So with the RGB color curve, the other one, the main setting here, it do it a lot differently um, than on the specific red, green, or blue color curves. If you make too many points, um, what happens is the colors get too saturated or too like tweaked and as you play the video, and I'm going to take out the sound right away because it's just annoying subway noise and chatter. Um, <laughs> reminders to wear your mask at all times. Uh, then when you play the video, if you kind of overdone hitting some of these peaks, it, it gets too like whited out here or dark or saturated or just it's hard to work with. Um, like here, that's just too, too, too green. So, I could leave it here, but it, I don't know, it looks kind of too pink and Easter egg-y. I almost like that look a little better. But there's another fun little whole area to explore and play with editing uh, your videos here, like I am, just on Photos, my Photos app in on my MacBook. So you can with each of these colors, uh, uh, red, yellow, green, um, it's turquoise or teal, whatever you call this color, aqua, blue, and pink, adjust the hue, the saturation, the luminescence, and the range. I usually don't mess with the range. It doesn't have in and of itself, like, too, doesn't seem to make it change too much. However, I usually do start with the hue just to see like how much of that color after I've done my color curve edits so um, the colors are a little bit already distorted how much of that color is in here that we're looking at so these are our reds and remember this is not the native photograph and or video rather and important thing that I didn't learn until uh, much later on that I will mention now, maybe should have mentioned originally, as you start editing your video and you want to refer back to, well, gosh, it's so t tweaked now and so different. Uh, what did the original look like? Well, there's this handy little icon here with the solid square and the line of a square. You just click on that, hold it. That's your original. That's my original. That's where I'm at now. I usually do something with the original footage and then just blow the colors out and have fun with it and mix that in with other videos and it's almost unrecognizable. I mean, you would recognize the subway, but people tell me all the time, oh, well, all your videos look all the same because they're all like big tall buildings in New York. They don't look the same to me, but, um, it, like, you know, it becomes more about the art than, than the scenery, if that makes sense. So, back to where I was with our selective color um, adjustments here. So my red, I'm not going to adjust the hue, I just wanted to see, like, really, maybe make it a tiny bit more yellow. So I'd rather have it more yellow than pink because it's already kind of overwhelming with the pink. And then I rarely de decrease the saturation unless actually maybe the pink here might be um, an 
exception to the rule. It's usually I'll maybe increase a little bit. Or just see how it looks. Like with with all these controls, it just takes a second. You know, you go both ways. Does that look better or worse? Like, you know, like you're at the eye doctor. Better or worse? Number one or number two? Luminescence. So if you do it here, fine. And I often do. But sometimes I will reserve adjusting the luminescence because it's like uh, two times or too much of one thing to do it both here on the selective color adjustments as well as, let's see here, under levels. Here again, you have a lot of options under the levels and it's kind of like the color curves, not exactly, but the different colors and um, each one you can move um, this together, the, the big dot in the middle on the bottom, but then these other five points are their own thing and it changes um, like uh, analogous to the color curves, it, it makes some drastic changes. But what I like to, what's unique here in this little box, the levels, um, is the luminescence setting. And same thing here, if you move the big dot in the middle, that's kind of like a heavy hitter, it's going to move both of the dots on the bottom in representing kind of like the highs and lows, um, foreground, like uh, trees and grass and ground and sky on the other end or on the high end, um, but not, it's not a, a hard fast rule. Sometimes one doesn't make as much of a change in one certain spot, maybe it will on another. It doesn't seem to really be adding a whole lot. Ooh, that made it brighter. I want to go away from that a little bit, maybe. That's this. That's where the money is over here on this side, I think, with the luminescence. So you can get some weird, like, neon effects here. And if I did, like, go with this weird look with the red stripe and you know, tweaking everything, then I would have to go back here adjust more like on the exposure because when everything gets this purpley color it's it's like a, a shadow color like a gray color that happens after you you're not going to have any grays because they kind of maxed out um peaks of the red and blue and green so go adjust these a little bit didn't grab it just to add back some some dark again it's kind of like that counter balance where if you um increase the luminescence then you have to adjust your black point or else everything is kind of faded out and then depending on the situation sometimes i um, make a point to make sure that certain things like the writing is still visible and if or legible I should say if you manipulated the colors um, where writing is like on a sign to where they're essentially the same color which you can do then you won't be able to see the writing but here it's pretty much okay and then I can always check like what did my original look like it's not black and white anymore it's actually really different My black's not like this pinkish purple. So I'm gonna get back down here to these colors. I really don't like so much pink. So I'm gonna like look at how much pink I'm dealing with. Ooh, that looks kind of cool. I like that better than what than the pink. So this is taking the the pink, which as I'm sure you know is a mixture of blue and red. And instead of the middle, making it more red or more blue. And I like it more heavy on the blue or the red than the natural pink. But not too much, we'll see. We'll see what happens with the, ooh, that's kind of bright. But you see here how just with 
and this this for me honestly is the most fun part of making videos just having fun with the colors it's like it's like um painting or color like when you're a kid coloring or painting but it's not messy it's easy and digital and you really can do a lot with the photos like there's the whole world of black and white and grainy and um ink versus like monochromatic or any of the colors monochromatic or making one color pop out where uh, you can desaturate like all the colors except the cool colors or the warm colors or a specific color um, you can create all kinds of really cool effects using the RGB color curves which I haven't even showed you yet where RGB the red green and blue instead of separate like they are here are all together um, so real quick, let me run through the rest of mine. Oh, I see. I like um here the blue looks cool if we get away from like there's too much pink and a little more on the teal side, and I can increase decrease the saturation again. Instead, I don't want to mess with the luminescence too much because then it starts to kind of bleed when you when you actually play the video. Like you see here how the colors are. I don't know starting to look like a little bit too saturated or unnatural that has to do a little bit with just like a little bit too much like you've increased like saturation and and tweaked out the hue and then you mess with the luminescence and it's it just starts to get like a little bit too I don't know, dense maybe is the word and I don't do all of this for every video necessarily and in, in some videos just you know it's better to kind of keep it natural um, and for at least one version, I almost always do. Ooh, that looks kind of cool with like popping out the yellow. I like it. So that's making green yellow. Kind of cool. And probably won't want to maybe even desaturate that. Maybe take some of this, eh, but that makes it too gray. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. That's where I'm at. Um, I could have come to um, so many different endpoints. I, I still can, um, but I just wanted to run through what I do uh, for if I want to make something just n look the opposite of natural, but like fun, vibrant, and artsy, cartoony kind of however you want to look at it, unique, um, stylized. There are settings here that are kind of preset. I'm reluctant to, they always mess up my levels here, and I'll sh but I'll show you anyway. So with the light, they're going to adjust, when you move this bar, the exposure highlight, shadows, brightness, contrast, and black point, and um, saturation, I think, or that might just be with the color one, uh, simultaneously. You see, when I move the light down, and they're kind of going in opposite directions. Like I tried to explain a little bit, but it depends. Sometimes it makes it better sometimes. And I actually kind of like it better here with the more orangey colors. And again, these adjustments are always standing on top of the other ones. So it's changing any one setting might look different or have a different effect in the context of what you've done before. The light and color exposure are kind of heavy hitters and that they're moving all of these controls at once, kind of, I don't know, doing the work for you, but don't necessarily make things much lighter or darker. Although here, I agree that the bar is making, in general, the colors lighter or darker, and interesting here with the color, when I desaturate it out, these are the colors that are kind of left um, underneath what I've adjusted in the uh, red, green, and blue color curves that normally with a without having adjusted those 
these colors would be gray more gray when I took this all down but as you can see here they're purple it's because they've kind of changed the base tone of a gray of a black of dark to to color with these curves it's kind of hard to understand I usually don't mess with the warmth here but sometimes it creates a cool effect it can be dramatic um, again it's something you know you just run through and do the thing like you know you're at the eye doctor better worse better worse better in the middle keep it in the middle you can always move it back you know like these these controls you can, you can get um into a little pickle here with the color curves you keep changing them and changing them and um you have all these dots you can always put your dot on the color curve back important thing to remember you get too many dots it starts getting hectic and I will try to show you an example of that so sometimes I use the vignette here I think maybe a little bit and you have different settings on the vignette here there's the strength right, which is like how dark it is and then how far in the darkening of the corners grows and then this softness here has the most dramatic effects sometimes more so I guess when you're outside makes it kind of a harder light but here with this is indoor lighting like fluorescent lighting um, so a little bit different than when you're working with uh, an outdoor video in natural sunlight or a night video and artificial light and street lights and car lights. So I've adjusted so much in all these color curves that I usually, if I took this approach initially, I wouldn't go back and do the RGB, but just to make this video complete, it, it, at this point it's going to be a heavy hitter because like I tried to explain, it's on top of so much other, so many other adjustments, but sometimes you can create effect maybe that you that you like better but then after you do this then I am usually compelled to go back up and again scrub through I mean now it's it's not looking so much it's just it's pretty pretty tweaked and just getting like a little more of the yellows or the oranges or the blues but we are sufficiently far and cartoony enough and stylized from the original, which is kind of humdrum boring, um, that it's it's going to be different, cool and pop in the right in the right setting, the right like final video edit setting. So this is again just editing the entire original video, all these edits apply to the length of the video I can shorten the video make clips um, but generally I take the whole video just edit it all and save it and I use what I use see what works so make it better I'm, I'm looking at this at the lettering I don't want to lose that uh, as I mentioned earlier if you Certain, sometimes it's hard to predict, but certain tweaks will fade out your lettering. So I would not want to do that or that or, or all the way up. And then it's like unreadable. And I do want that to sometimes I mean, that would be a good thing in a certain clip if it was like all advertising or McDonald's or the bank or something boring. Or you're not trying to promote. That looks kind of cool, but that's kind of heavy. Going to need lots of black, which is fine usually. But if you're trying to do overlays, or, um, black can sometimes be hard to work with. It's just so dark and impenetrable and especially like this big litter can. Another thing, my friend actually got mad at, at me 
for the snake. Hi, shadows are all over my face. This, that happens when you're tweaking all these adjustments. If your friend's in the video or you're in the video and you don't want shadows in your, on your face because it, it, it looks kind of like smirky or like you're an avatar or something here. Well, that's not the right direction. These settings here, the, the contrast up, contrast up or brightness down um, helped and then the the converse made it worse. Shadows it can be hard to correct if you're going for that alone. Like usually I don't care. I'm not doing selfies in my videos and there we go. That took it, but that probably really dulled yeah the rest of my video and didn't like totally drain the the popping kind of effect that I liked with the colors. Try to get back there. That's kind of cool. It's... Ooh. I try to stay away from. I don't know, to be honest, I usually most of the videos from editing are outdoors, but that that bright, crazy light. I don't know. It's not um, aesthetically pleasing, in my opinion. I liked it before I started messing with trying to correct shadows on people's faces, which is <laughs> precisely why I usually leave them. That looks kind of cool with making the lights kind of a little yellowish. Let's scrub through this. Now I feel like there's too much turquoise, so I'm gonna take that down a little bit. Actually, take the turquoise out of the blue. That makes it really purple. Take that down a little bit, maybe. Too gray. That's kind of funky. Uh, no, I'm liking that, but it's too, too blurry, too much. So this, <laughs> this is kind of overworked at this point, honestly. Um, I wanted to show you all of the settings, but I rarely would use. Oh, that's different rarely would use all of them at once and this is just like a l really heavily saturated down, down take that down get the black point to more normal That looks kind of cool. Honestly, I could I could do this all day. I just I love it. I love playing with it and like creating something like completely different and cool looking and weird looking and like I'm good if it's almost unrecognizable. The only thing I'm not liking about like this color scheme, which has some kind of cool contrast and almost like um a liquid kind of color effect is it's kind of a putrid green, isn't it? Ooh. Oh, but subways are gross. Maybe maybe that's what I'm trying to portray artistically. So Let's leave it at that for this one, and um, just as a quick reminder, as with pretty much any uh, software program application, Control Z or Command Z rather with with the MacBook is your friend. If I press Command Z, it's going to undo the last thing I did. So fine. Let me see what this does. I'm just always interested. Like, well, what if I move this button? 
because like I said they do different things depending on what the other settings are. And you can revert to ori original, the whole thing here. This is just a peek at what the original was. And then this will revert to the original and I can press that and still go back with the control Z. This here's part of my problem. My RGB color curve was going off the screen, which is kind of a, like a hypersaturation. I'm gonna try taking this endpoint. Oops, I don't want two separate dots down a little bit. Sometimes these in ones are kind of hard to grab. Let's see what that does. Uh, in general, and, and, and it's true in this case, what taking this endpoint on the right down is going to do is make your whites black and your blacks white. So as you can see here, the original color, the writing here is white-ish, and then what's dark is dark, but if I take this down, that flips. The highs become low and the lows become high. It can be a cool look, especially outside during the day if you want to turn the sky black and then make the colors like really poppy neon against it, which I've done quite a bit. Oh, that's... All right, well now, now I'm just messing around. I don't know if I'll use this like this, but you always have options. You can always revert back to original, no problem. Start over, have a ball. So I'm just gonna say done. And because of my iCloud and sharing and all that, I end up with um, two versions of most things anyway. So here's my original. And there's my super tweet and I will stop here wow that was a long one I didn't realize I could talk and edit for 30 minutes straight um, thanks for staying with me and I hope you liked and learned and I hope that many of you do have questions and will ask them in the comments um, I'm trying to cover all the bases here and I will keep trucking on. Stay tuned for some videos coming up real soon where I'm back on a bike. My beloved Van Moof bike has had a flat tire, I had to lug it to the shop in Williamsburg. That was actually the subway trip for this video. Uh, it's painful. I'm going to schlep all over on foot in the freezing cold and take the nasty scrubways um but i will put the cycle back in cycle chic and hope you will stick around hope you will subscribe if you haven't and like the video and i will see you on the next one a tout à l'heure